Good morning. This is John and Lisa Hood, and this is our testimony. Hi, uh, I'm Lisa Hood, and I just thought I'd give a little background on uh, where I was before uh, before I came to know who Jesus was and be a follower of Him. Um, I think you would have liked me. I was a nice person. I wasn't caught up in drugs or anything like that. Um, but I was never uh, in a church hardly at all my whole life growing up. My family didn't go to church. It was just, uh, you know, something that, that wasn't in my life at all. The only uh, exposure I had was, um, and this is still really important to me, was watching the Peanuts uh, Christmas, the Charlie Brown Christmas show. And that scripture, when in the middle of that little half hour show, he says, uh, Linus starts to explain what the real meaning of Christmas is. And he says, you know, this is, in this day in the city of David was born a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Um, and that just, this is what the real meaning of Christmas was. And so that was just a fundamental, important thing to me. Uh, and having not having any background in, in Christianity at all. So uh, John and I started to, um, we were dating, and then 9-11 happened. And uh, it hit us both pretty hard, as it did all Americans, I guess, that, uh, you know, our countrymen had fallen at the hands of evil, and we... Uh, we had started a little bit previous to that. We had started talking about uh, religion, church, those kind of things, and and I had some pretty set ideas in my mind because I had been I'd grown up in the church. Uh, for me, the church that we were going to was a little bit of a dead church. It was more of a memorization type of thing, and it never really. Uh, exposed me to what the Bible was saying in a way that made sense to me as a young man. And uh, so we were both really, uh, and in our new relationship, we were both finally in a place where we could freely talk about, uh, you know, our our desire to know who God was. And, you know, so through the two of us, expressing our past and we just start, started searching. And we had some friends uh, in a place that we both worked at the same company. And we had some friends there and they just seemed to have such a vibrant life in through and in their church. And it was just so powerful. It's like, wow, they, they really have something that we don't. And, you know, we we're a little envious of that and, and trying to figure out, you know, what is it? Uh, um, and then exploring our own feelings about uh, in, about God and and uh, so uh, we just started going to church after nine eleven. We didn't really find the right church for us, but we kept searching, and uh, we uh, we ended up getting married, um, and we went to some counseling, some marriage counseling before we got married because we had both been married twice before. And we really wanted to make a new start with this. So we went to marriage counseling through a very nice pastor. And he really coached us, although he never pressured us at all. He just really talked to us very well. And uh, through that, we decided to have scripture read at our wedding. And I think that was a very important all these things just lead up to how we were seeking, we were looking, we were, you know, trying to find God. And he was also reaching out to us by putting people in in our paths, like this pastor that married us. This man was, a, was what a pastor should be. He was gentle but firm. He explained to us the meaning of marriage. He explained to us that it wasn't something to be entered into lightly because we had spoken to him about the fact that this was not our first marriage. And 
it it was very important that to both of us that we were married uh, through God this time. And uh, I guess 20 years has brought that together. I mean, it's it's really shown us the importance of that decision when, when we made it. We invited him in, in our own way, not being unsaved and not knowing what we were really doing. I think we invited God into our marriage and the cord of three strands is not easily broken. And now we're, we're on the verge of our 20th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. But um, we were living in uh, northern Colorado in the Red Feather Lakes area and we had had, we had, we had gotten married and had a baby all within a year and uh, things were uh, going pretty well but we still had not found uh, a real good home church and so I was listening to the radio as I drove to work. Um, our mother-in-law was staying with us uh, to help watch the new baby. He was just four months old. And um, I heard a message on the radio. It was a little two-minute spot that, um, that was out of Jerry Martin's Cowboy Church, which met at the Terry Bison Ranch in Wyoming. And he just, when I listened to those little two-minute spots, it just seemed to... The radio she, just seemed to amplify the sound. Hmm. And I thought, this is where we really need to go. It just was so strong. It just came through the radio so strongly and so loudly that it was just a very, uh, just a powerful sign to me that this is where we were supposed to go. So I, I went home and I talked to him about it and, uh, it met on, this church met on Wednesday nights because Jerry was into rodeo and they, uh, they were at rodeos every, every weekend. So it was a Wednesday night service. So I talked to John about going. Mom-in-law was on board. She was ready to go and we were ready to take the baby. And it was a, a cold, stormy night. <laughs> I was extremely resistant to taking a brand new three-month-old boy out into the cold and snowy roads and the ice and all that and I I got pretty adamant about the fact that I was not going to go just tonight maybe we'll wait till next week but I ain't going tonight because it is a mess out there and this is it I I used the word stupid even that it was stupid to go out on a on a night like this and my loving wife looked right at me and said we need to go and uh so I was grumpy. I got, uh, all right, fine. We'll just go kill ourselves going to church. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> and, uh, we went and uh, well, we were as we, we headed were down headed down the mountain. I mean, this is a a steep mountain road. We were headed down. We had both worked all day. Um, we were headed down the mountain, and the snow was coming down really pretty hard. And I was beginning to wonder if it was the right decision <laughs> to go, but we went and. We went and uh, when we walked in the door, probably five or six people came up to us. We had never met any of these people. We knew nothing about them. And uh, they came up and loved on us a little bit and said hello and really warmly greeted us into this church. And that's been a, something that we look for in churches from that point forward. And uh, during the service, the pastor was talking about anger. And, you know, I just told you I was pretty angry about having to go, but um, that was, that has always been an issue for me is uh, controlling my anger a little better. And he was a similar man, I guess, in some ways. And he, so he talked about how through Jesus Christ, he learned to be a, a more, uh, to respond in love rather than anger. And uh, that really spoke to me. And I felt like he was talking directly to me, even though he, I'd never seen this man in my life, but he, it, his message hit me hard. And so we, 
we met several people there that we really liked. Uh, it was just a warm, welcoming church. And I have, since then, I've never had to try to talk him into going to church. <laughs> It's just a, you know, if anything, he's, he's prodding me along. So it, it, that was just an amazing thing. It was amazing for all of us. Um, Mom-in-law lo loved it too, and she was very interested in it. So from then on, we started going to that church. Uh, One of the things that struck me about that church, when we first went that first time, as we were walking out the door, and I have no idea what made me say this or even think it, but I told Lisa, we will be coming again because the Holy Spirit resides here. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't know what that even meant, mm -hmm. but it just came out of my mouth. And, and uh, So we started uh, attending that church, uh, and it was a couple of weeks later. Uh, we still had not given ourselves over. We still had not... Uh, accepted Christ yet, but we were just so enthralled um, at that point. And I knew that uh, it would just be a matter of time. I was thinking the next time, maybe he does an altar call, I'll, I'll, I'll raise my hand. And this was a church where you bowed your head and raised your hand and everybody, uh, so that it was a more of a private thing, you know, who was, and then the, who was accepting, and then they'd put a little Bible in your hand as you had your head bowed and uh, so during the service that probably three weeks the third week that we went there the pastor asked if someone could build a cross and he wanted a as close to full-size cross as he could get and he said I have a special thing that I want to do on Easter and it will involve this cross. So if you can build this cross, it needs to be done the week before Easter. And, and uh, I've, I'm a carpenter. I do those kind of things. But this whole church was working men, carpenters, cowboys, people that could easily accomplish this. We were fairly new in the church. I didn't think he would uh, trust me to, to do something that that felt that important and uh, it surprised me because no one raised their hand no one stood up and said I'll do that for you pastor not a single person and uh, it it just struck me that that's that's nuts you know the, 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 all these working men are not jumping up to do that so at the end of the service I was just struck to, to go talk to the pastor, and I, I, I went to him, and I said, you know, I can build that cross. And he looked at me, and he said, yes, I think you can. And um, I had a boss that had just recently shown me some western red cedar uh, four by sixes that he had and he was telling me all the neat things he was going to build out of those and i knew he had a real attachment to them but i thought you know what those would make the perfect cross so i i went to him and i said this man was not a saved man either and i i said to him you know my church really needs a cross and that those western red cedar boards would build the most perfect cross ever. Can I have them? I said, I'll, I'll buy them from you if I need to. I'll do whatever. And he, he looked at me and he said, no, just take them. And uh, so I got the boards. They were well weathered. They looked very, very rugged. And uh, I took them home. And because we were working every day and stuff, I, it got kind of closer to the time that it needed to be done, so I started building the cross. And uh, I spent a goodly part of time making a special joint so that the it would look like one piece and did a really careful job of that. And I was, you know, into my craftsmanship and everything and wasn't really thinking 
a lot about what it was, but one of the requests that the pastor had made was that we put spikes where the hands were and where the feet were. And uh, I had found some really neat looking spikes that would work for what he wanted to do. And uh, I grabbed a two pound hammer and set the first spike and started to raise up to hit it. And uh, I broke down and started crying and I couldn't stop. Now, I'm not a crying guy, but I could not stop crying. And it took me probably a half an hour before I could get the spikes driven and during this period of time I was asking forgiveness and saying I you know I don't I don't want to be the guy that does this to you and just these things pouring out of my soul that I didn't even know existed in there and it was extremely moving to me and uh, I got I finally got the the nails in place and I built a, a stand and stood it up. And this was in our garage. We had a two-car garage. Um, and kind of cleaned myself up a little bit and went inside and puttered around somewhere else so that Lisa wouldn't see that I'd been crying. Because I didn't think she'd really understand that whole thing. And I didn't really understand it myself. And uh, She said, well, how'd it come out? And I said, you're just going to need to go look at it yourself. And uh, she, so she went out there. And it was it was just such a powerful, it was just so powerful. It was so compelling is a good word, too, you know, to understand um, what that cross was. This was a life-size cross. I'm sure it was smaller than what they used back in the Roman days, but it was very close to life-size. It was in our garage. It had the nails in it, and it had one very dim <laughs> light bulb, which was all we had out in that garage. So it was very compelling uh, to look and stand before that. You just can't stand before something like that without feeling something, or you have no heart at all. And... She came back in and I could see that she was very moved by it. And uh, I said, it, there's something about that. I, I don't know what it is, but it's calling me. And uh, so I, didn't I kept tell going him that, that I was going to, you know, accept the, accept my, the offer of salvation. But uh, I think we were both at that point really thinking about it, but we did not speak about it about that to each other and then this was Easter Sunday on that that year that that cross was up there and you know I remember everything in detail about that day um, how the cross was there what the room looked like um, I remember our, our worship leader singing songs and I just remember everything about it and we all wrote down our sins on a piece of paper, sins that we wanted to be forgiven for, um, things that we were holding on to. And, um, and then he, the pastor called everyone up to whoever wanted to place your paper on one of the nails. And it was just so powerful. And then when they did the altar call, you know, it was just all about me. This was my personal thing. So I raised my hand and and uh, that was, that was my, uh, that was when I was saved. Well, unbeknownst to me, because we were following the rules and I had my head down and eyes closed, she had accepted the Lord as her Savior. And uh, I don't know if we did it simultaneously, but I also raised my hand. And uh, so our church would put a small packet of um, information in your hand as, as you did this. And I didn't realize, I was so swept up in my moment that I didn't realize that Lisa had also accepted Christ. And so 
I opened my eyes. I was almost a little embarrassed to look at her because I had this packet of stuff on my lap and I was thinking, you know, this, this is going to be kind of hard to explain to her. But I looked over at her and on her lap was the same packet. So we received Christ the same time, the same day. And, uh, and we've been head over, I think head over heels in love is a good way to express how we have been. It's just been the same and close to the same intensity for both of us. We, uh, we've had our moments where, you know, we've doubted, but you had know, our ups and downs, uh, had our ups and downs. Uh, one of them was this church that we, that we got saved through. Uh, we, uh, we, I mean, we went head over heels in, into being involved and got involved in every aspect of everything that was going on. Also, you know, we were, being new Christians, we were so absorbed in reading our Bible all the time. We were going to every every offering, a Bible study, everything. We were totally immersed in the uh, church and the, uh, everything that the outreaches and the and the uh, ministries that that church, particular church, did. And it was so wonderful. I mean, it was a beautiful time. I look back at that time and I just think, wow, this was just was some of the happiest time in our lives. Uh, and then uh, the pastor of that church uh, decided that even though the church was vibrant and growing, he felt like he really needed to concentrate on what he did best, and that was ministering to the rodeo crowds on Sunday mornings at, all over the country. And so he decided to dissolve the church, and that was just devastating. That was heartbreaking for us. It was and uh... devastating to us. We were so in love with everybody and everything that was going on and it was i i cried i grieved i couldn't understand it and then we had to decide whether we were following a person or whether we were following following jesus and trust that we would find a new church and that was a monumental thing for us yep and so we moved to albin and found a church there actually the pastor found us and he reached, he, out, to he reached out to us and that was that was the beginning of the understanding that the body is still intact even though we were with a different church a different group of people and it that's what that church taught us and it also uh, taught us about small groups we had a pretty amazing number of uh, marriage uh, classes that we did, and they were very, very, very good at that. In uh, that, in that next church was, a, and and we needed that, and that was just really wonderful. They just being in the uh, under the you know the counseling of uh, couples that had been married for a very long time that were very strong. It just was just it was uh, awesome. It was very good for us to have that through the church. So we had the church and we had this wonderful marriage uh, enrichment type things going on and uh, and that was awesome. And then we moved again and we found another church and and all this uh, has strengthened our belief that you know that God is everywhere and there are good churches everywhere no matter where you are and uh, he will always lead you to the to the next right church for you each church that we've been to has had a significant different personality different culture different different way that but they're all were Christ following and all uh, definitely were very immersed in the Bible um, and so it, I guess what we're trying to say here is that uh, God leads you to where you need to be and he led us to our where we were saved and sought us out and uh, because I never we thought that him first, I, think. I never thought that I was worthy of, of being his child and uh, I just want to do a little evangelizing real quick. Everyone is worthy of, of God's love. He loves you regardless of whether you love Him. He'll never forsake you. He's always loved you and He always will.